Hi, my name is Peter Moriarty and I'm from IT Genius Australia and I'd like to show you how to build a fantastic internet system for your business using Google Sites. I'm going to give you a little bit of a philosophy background on, uh, on systemization and building systems in your business and then what I'd like to do is actually walk you through some of the steps in building your own systems for your business and then give you a little bit of an idea of how we're using Google Sites for our business to actually create systems and processes all in one central place to uh, keep our business running really efficient and keep the whole team uh, knowing exactly what systems and processes they need to follow to get their work done. So let's start with systemization and the philosophy behind systemization. Einstein once said, any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex, but it takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. And I think this is a great quote which really encapsulates what we're trying to do here. We want to make these systems as simple as possible for your staff to follow, or as simple as possible to delegate to a virtual assistant, or as simple as possible so you don't have to remember all of the complex steps in a process uh, when you need to recall it in the future. A few books that I like to recommend to read uh, as part of systemization are, are these ones here, primarily The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss and The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. These are both books which are very much uh, heavily focused on systemization as a way of actually building your business and a way of creating intrinsic value in your business uh, or, or in the, the product or the service that you're selling to actually help you scale more effectively and also help you deliver a more consistent service as well. A couple of general business books that I like to recommend are Good to Great by Jim Collins and Rework. Uh, Rework is by the, the 37 Signals team who wrote, uh, wrote the project management uh, software Basecamp. They're also both great business books and I recommend them to anybody who's in business. Now, let's talk about the entrepreneur's curse. The Entrepreneur's Curse is uh, something that's uh, been thrown around quite a lot and that is quite often you get to the end of the day and you think, well, where did all my time go? It's quite hard to, you know, when you're working by yourself, I guess, be disciplined on where you're spending your time. Is it effective time? Is it non-effective time? And just trying to track, well, how much time are you spending doing what tasks in your business? I came across this app a couple of years ago. It's called Rescue Time, and you can go to rescuetime.com and download it for free. It works on Mac and PC. And Rescue Time actually tracks what you do during the day on your personal computer and saves it to a private website. And what that does is at the end of the week, it will actually send you a report and give you analytics on what you've spent your time doing. So if, you spent your time, you know, if you've been wasting your time on social media or reading news websites, it's going to tell you that you weren't very productive that week. But if you've spent lots of your time in, in maybe your project management so software or your email because you've been doing business development, you're going to get a really good score. The cool thing that it does is it actually ranks you across the average productivity of all of the rescuetime.com users. And so that's pretty cool. It, it makes a little bit of a competition to see just how productive you can get yourself. If you've got specific websites that you do use for business, you can also categorize those websites to be productive or non-productive time. So for instance, if you are a social media consultant and using Facebook and Twitter are things that you would normally do during the day, you can categorize those websites as, uh, websites as such. You may be thinking, can I install this on my staff members' computers? And the answer is yes, why not? Uh, obviously, you want to check uh, with your employment laws in the, in the country that you're based in. However, um, as long as you've got it in your employment agreement, uh, then you should be able to install it on your staff members' computers if you want to really have that much control over seeing what they're doing. The next concept that I'd like to explain is something called the perfect week or the perfect calendar week. And that's something that I'm quite serious about, is really getting everything that I do scheduled into my calendar. I not only schedule things like sleep and, and getting ready in the morning, which sounds a bit silly, but it's all based on the idea of creating a routine around your life will ensure that you can deliver more consistently in not only your business, but generally in your life as well. So I like to schedule things like uh, you know my downtime, I schedule time when I need to rest and repair, uh, but I also am quite meticulous about scheduling my business time so I can make sure that I'm always keeping the most efficient and effective use of my time. 
I've also got a concept called the perfect week where certain days of the week are dedicated to certain tasks. If you're a solo operation or a small business owner and you're having trouble, I guess, getting focused because you're feeling like you're just wearing way too many hats and you're not quite sure what task to deal with next because there's so many flashing lights that are sort of popping up and commanding your attention, it's a good idea to actually dedicate certain days of the week to do specific tasks. So you might do your sales calls on one particular day. You can see here on my Wednesday, I do my sales meetings. On Friday is a good day to do finance, following up invoices, sending out invoices to your clients and doing payroll and paying contractors as well if you've got a staff or other invoices to pay. Uh, you may do client meetings on a Tuesday and that keeps all of them condensed in, in one day. If you need to travel, you can spend that one day out of the office traveling out and about. And just putting together that routine really, I guess, gets you on a, uh, on a nice roll and, and, and a rhythm during the week, which means that you can deliver more consistently to your clients and you feel a little bit less stressed out. Let's start talking about systemization. So having worked with many corporates and, uh, and other large companies, I've got a little bit of a feel for an idea of how systemization is normally done in larger businesses. And for anybody who's worked in these kind of companies before, you would know that these kind of companies will have some sort of systems and processes documented, and they normally look a little something like this, stored away in binders on a shelf without anybody actually paying attention to them because they're so out of date and so rarely used, they're just not relevant to the company anymore. Now, small businesses, on the other hand, they take a slightly different approach to systemization. It looks a little bit more like this. There aren't any systems. Small business owners are generally so busy trying to grow their business, service their customers, manage their staff, and they're just wearing so many hats at the same time, it's just way too hard to build any sort of systems and processes. Now, I studied this when I was reading the books, you know, the 4-Hour Workweek and the e -Myth, and I was thinking to myself, there must be a better way of doing systems for small businesses. How can an entrepreneur ever get any work done if they're stuck in the business and they just can't leverage anything? I was actually shown a small business systemization framework by an associate of mine, and he showed me a really easy way to start building basic systems from scratch. And I'd like to show you exactly what that formula looks like. Now, I can't credit this to myself, but I'd like to show you the system for writing systems, which is actually coined by Jack DeLosa from The Entourage and you can Google Jack and have a look at everything that he's about there. So you should follow this template to help create nice, basic, effective systems for your business. This will get you in the right frame of mind on how to actually create systems from scratch. So first ask yourself what? What is the result of this process? If you've got a system like paying a bill or um, calling up a, a client and how you deal with them on the phone, or maybe it's uh, uh, you know how you deliver your product, or how you uh, attach shipping labels to products when you, uh, when you ship them, if you're, if you're in a product business. What is the result of the process? What is the actual end game? What is the thing that you want to achieve or the person who is performing this process needs to achieve? The next question to ask is why? Why is it important that this process is actually done? Why is it important that the process is done correctly? Why is it important to the staff member who's actually going to be performing this task? Asking the why question and documenting that why question as part of your process means that the person who's assigned to perform this task actually has a real ownership of the task because they understand why they're going to get the result that they're going to get. They understand what the meaning is for your business and what the meaning is for, for your organization and for their role to actually get the desired result. And I think that's one of the most important parts of a process. So no one's just following things like, you know, uh, I guess blindly taking instructions. So they have a bit of meaning as to why they're actually performing these processes. The next question to ask is when? When should this process be performed? Are there any particular trigger points that will mean that this process needs to be done? So does it need to be done on Tuesday mornings or does it need to be done when X happens? Is this a process that needs to be followed every single time uh, a product is shipped out? Or is this a process that needs to be followed every time a call is answered or a customer service request comes in? The next question is who? Who's gonna be the person responsible for this process? 
You can also delve a little bit deeper and say, well, who's responsible for reviewing the process? Does it get reviewed once a month? Does it get reviewed once a quarter? And finally, how? We get to the instructions on exactly how to perform the task. Now, it's very important to know that different people learn in different ways. So you may want to detail a task in steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four. And a lot of people will learn that way and say, yes, okay, there's an obvious list of sequential steps here, and they'll be able to perform the task that you've documented. However, some people might actually want to see it visually represented before they can actually perform the task. They may learn in a different way. And so I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation how you can actually very easily visually represent processes. It's a good idea to include a checklist or some sort of, uh, some sort of metric or way of your staff or you measuring how this task is successful. And then finally, a video of the task actually being done is a fantastic way of making sure the person who's learning the task can get a really good idea of exactly what it looks like being performed. Now, if it's a task that's being performed on your computer and you're sending this to a virtual assistant or, or another staff member working for you, you can use software like Jing or Snagit, um, and they're both free. You can download them for PC or Mac and actually record short videos and short screen captures to be able to actually capture a process of what you're doing on your computer. If it's maybe a physical process, if, uh, you know, if you've got a physical business or, or you need to show somebody actually doing something physically outside the realms of the computer, why not just grab yourself you know, your iPhone or your Samsung or, or a, or a you know, basic video camera and film it being done and then you can upload it to maybe a private video on YouTube and store it that way. Bringing all of these together means that you have a really effective process and a really effective system for writing these processes so you can be most effective in educating the people that need to actually perform them. So let's talk a little bit about Google Sites. If you haven't already heard of Google Apps, Google Apps is the collaboration platform from Google which includes Gmail for Business, which is essentially Gmail but it lets you bring your own domain name so you can have Gmail running under your own business account. There's also Google Docs which has spreadsheets word processing, and also a presentations and drawing tool all online that work in your browser. There's contacts and calendars and other collaboration applications like Google Talk, which is a chat program. But the one I want to focus on today is Google Sites. And Google Sites is a little bit like an intranet slash wiki program. It's a private internal website just for you and your staff. And what it allows you to do is create systems and processes and pages so that your organization can actually collaborate together in a space that's a bit more effective than saving your systems and processes just in a company drive stored away somewhere in a Dropbox or, or on a server sitting somewhere. So I'll show you what it looks like. This is the main interface of Google Sites. It looks pretty familiar. You've got word editing, word processing editing tools up along the top. You've got a page editor here, which looks a little bit like if you've ever edited a WordPress blog or some form of online content management system, maybe in the back end of your website. On the left-hand side here, we have a hierarchical folder structure. And what that allows us to do is create nice, deep, structured folder systems for organizing different pages. So moving along, I'll show you what one process looks like on one of our pages. So this is the security process for our business. You can see here that it's in the getting started section of our intranet. Now we call ours the genius net, but you can name yours whatever you'd like. Now of the security process, that tells us all of the basics of what a new staff member needs to know when they're actually coming on board in our business. This means that instead of us in the past, training somebody manually by hand on this process, now that we've got this all documented, we can actually just send a new staff member along to this page to have a read and they'll be able to understand exactly what needs to be achieved in this process. Getting slightly more advanced, we have our new first week process for new staff that come onto our business. So these staff, when they first start, they will actually get an overview of the first week of their training 
all in one page in the Genius Net. And so what that means is when somebody new is starting, instead of the normal six to eight to 12 week process of onboarding a new staff member, our new team members are actually onboarded within one week. They come on board and read, number one, right through the whole of our intranet site based on Google Sites. They learn all of our systems and processes, and as you can see, there are hyperlinks here to other pages. And then once they've been through all of our systems and processes, there's video training for them to complete, which is all online. And once the video training is completed, at the end of the week, they're actually ready to start producing and start doing work with us, which is quite an exciting thing. This has reduced our training and onboarding time from six to eight to 12 weeks, right down to one. The next thing that you can do in Google Sites is actually embed images, which is quite cool. What that means is if you need to visually represent something like maybe a map, we've got here a map of how to walk down to the post office down the road, which is one of the common questions when someone joins us in our business. So you can very easily take a screenshot or upload any photos from your computer or from the internet and insert them into a page in Google Sites. One of the more advanced features is that Google Sites actually includes a mini database feature so you can create your own lists and mini databases right within Google Sites. Now this is actually quite handy for a supplier list. This is really easy for your staff to add and remove items in a mini database so they can use it to work with one another during the day. Now you can customize each one of these fields so you can turn it into any kind of database that you want. Some of our other clients have used this functionality to create an asset register, or maybe a log of internal and external mail communications coming out of their business. You could even use it for a very basic CRM, or Customer Relationship Manager. Moving along, finally, one of the more advanced things is actually being able to integrate visual processes right into Google Apps and Google Sites. We use a site called lucidchart.com, which is free and you can go ahead and check that out. And what lucidchart.com allows you to do is create flow charts and visual representations of your systems and processes online. Now lucidchart then allows you to embed those systems and processes into your Google Sites page so your staff can actually see a lovely, rich, visual representation of the process that needs to be completed right in your Google Sites intranet. And what that means is for those team members who maybe learn a little bit differently and don't quite get all the information they need just from bullet points or step one, two, three, four, they can actually get a nice clean visual representation of the process to help them actually learn in a different way. This works great in conjunction with video. So you, if you have all three, then you, you, you're basically set. You've got, the, uh, you've got the golden handshake. You've got it 100% rocking. If you've got a step-by-step -step process in text, a visual representation using a flowchart like lucidchart.com, and then a video of your system or process or task being performed, that's absolute gold. And it means that anybody who you want to delegate a task to is going to be able to perform that really well. It also means that training somebody new will be a cinch. So if you're looking to scale your business or if you're looking to just get out of the business yourself and have other people do the work for you, then this is just what you need. My name is Peter Moriarty. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been beneficial. Please check out our site, systemizenow.com. If you'd like to know more about Google Sites or if you have any questions, that you'd like us to answer for you, we'd be more than happy to help out.